Well, hello, this is Meryl Goldsmith, and we are live in Market Square in downtown Amesbury. I know between mask and sunglasses, who is that person? It's me, and I am here to help host the groundbreaking of the uh, of this wonderful new building. If you were walking around in the upper middle yard, you would have seen so much activity going on. And I'm going to tell you the story along with my friends from the Amesbury Carriage Museum. But we want to introduce um, the Industrial History Center and Bonnie Brady from the Amesbury Carriage Museum. Bonnie is going to help on this wonderful tour. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Meryl. So happy to be here today. It's a great occasion. It's a great occasion. So we are starting in front of the counting house, so familiar. We want everybody to know exactly where we're going and where we are and everything. And um, so tell us why we're starting here and why we're heading through the beautiful arches. Right, so you know, this is the heart of downtown Amesbury. So we're so fortunate that our new history center is gonna be right in the upper mill yard. So we wanted you to kind of get that experience with us. So we're going to walk on over to the construction site. I do want to remind folks that when you're coming out, you know, running errands or having something to eat, stop in front of the counting house. There's a, an exhibit here that points out some information about the new Industrial History Center that we're hoping will be open by beginning of the year, perhaps, or, or early springtime, right, Bonnie? Yeah, early spring is what we're planning. Uh, as long as COVID uh, cooperates, uh, we'll be doing uh, exhibits, but we'll also be continuing our live uh, virtual programs as well. Wonderful, so we're gonna go for a walk. Let's do it, my dear. All right, and Russ is gonna be following us as we go through the arches here. And uh, I don't ever get sick of this view, Bonnie as you look up, I mean, and you can see we have some folks standing in front of the um, uh, the Industrial History Center. I think there's even, uh, I don't know, Peter Hoyt's in that crowd, I think, too. <laughs> oh, yes, Peter is there. He wouldn't miss it. He's been working on this project for many, many years. So here we are. So we're just through the archway. Our offices are over there. Our offices are, or the um, Amesbury Carriage Museum offices are over there, and so, um, we are just past the, the John Moore's mural and we're, we're looking up and uh, that's such a beautiful building and um, we really have Greg Jardis to thank for that. Absolutely, Greg Jardis has been such a big fan and so generous. Uh, so we have 2,700 square feet of space on the ground floor and it's on the other side of where he has the Amesbury Industrial Supply. So he's on High Street, and this is the back of that building, but what a great space for us to be open to the mill yard. Uh, that way we can use the outdoor and the indoor space. It's gonna be wonderful. It is gonna be wonderful. Okay, let's continue our walk, and um, we're approaching, everybody knows where we are here, Bonnie. Oh yes, flatbreads are neighbors. <laughs> We love flatbread. <laughs> so I can just picture like in the future, you come down with the family and, you know, get something to eat and uh, then come into the Industrial History Center and enjoy a day with the family and then maybe go sit in the amphitheater. I mean, so much. This is just going to be so wonderful. Yes. I mean, we already have some programs that make use of the mill yard, such as our family day program. Um, so now that the History Center is going to be open, it'll be an indoor-outdoor event. Uh, it's amazing to have all this real estate available to us. And all to thank uh, Greg and his crew and the builders. We've got so many people to talk to, so we just want to be careful because this is an active construction site. So we are stepping over the barriers as we enter the Industrial History Center site and at the podium is John Mayer, who is the executive director of the Amesbury Carriage Museum. And we've got some speakers and we're gonna go inside the building after for a tour. So you will get to see exactly what this space looks like. So I'd like to turn things over to John Mayer. Hey Meryl, thank you so much. And I am so proud and delighted to be here this afternoon. This truly is an amazing event. So many people involved with the Amesbury Carriage Museum have worked very, very hard to get to this moment. 
I'm proud to be the director of the museum and helping move this project even further along. So welcome everybody today. So we have a small audience. We're trying to be kind of socially aware and distance. You've met Merrill Goldsmith and Bonnie Brady who are part of the Carriage Museum staff. We have other board me members with Mary Chatney and her husband Bill, Peter Hoyt, part of our capital campaign, and Tom Pendergast. We have Mayor Gove and Caitlin Thayer who are part of the mayor's office. Shelby Snyder and Ben Becker, who are from BLB Custom Building and part of our, our crew. Uh, Phil DeColangero from the Amesbury Chamber of Commerce. And some fans, I see Barbara Bell in the background. Hi, Barbara. Pam Fenner and other people who have been just part of the Carriage Museum program. This has taken a lot of work for us to get to this point. We're, we're calling this the launch of the public phase of our campaign. We've worked for a couple years on planning for the project. We've done work with our donor community. There are a number of people who aren't here today who have been incredibly generous to the Carriage Museum. We had a lead gift from Dan Healy, a Mass Cultural Council, and their Capital Facilities Fund also provided generous support. Newburyport Bank, the Institution for Savings, the Arakalian Foundation, and a long list of private donors who you can find them on the Industrial History Center website. This project is a culmination of decades of planning for the Carriage Museum. It's been 30 years that people have imagined having a public facility that would serve the community with exhibits and programs, a showcase for our collection, a way to bring the community together to celebrate Amesbury history, and now we are so close to making that happen. I think when we finish our presentation today, we'll go inside and people can see what the space will look like. We're incredibly grateful to the generosity of Greg Jardis, who's donated the use of this space. He's supported us with some financial gifts. And finally, we're, we're seeing the project come forward. I'm gonna turn the podium over to Mary Chatney, who is the immediate past president of the board of directors of the Amesbury Carriage Museum. And Mary, she's the one who brought me onto the uh, board here and I'm delighted to have you here and part of the program. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, John. Good afternoon. A few years back, John Mayer found this quote on page 44 of the Essex Memorial of 1836, embracing a register of the county. Quote, most of the people in Amesbury belong to the productive class very few are raised above the necessity of personal exertion. All are active and industrious, readily find employment, and command good wages." Unquote. Every time I hear that quote, I am reminded that Amesbury citizens are still of the productive class, active and industrious. They hear a good idea and work to bring it to fruition, no matter how long it takes. It is that industriousness that has brought us to today. After 30 years or so, we are breaking ground on the Industrial History Center and realizing the dream of so many people that came before. People like Margaret Rice, Holly Patton, Harriet Gould, Richard Gale, and Betty Goodwin, to name a few. How pleased they would all be to know that their dream is now becoming a reality. The mission of the Amesbury Carriage Museum is to champion the history of Amesbury industry and people. And with the construction of the Industrial History Center, we are now able to do just that, with a space where the community can gather to celebrate our past while recognizing its connection to our present and future. I am filled with so much gratitude to all the people that have donated their talent, time, and treasure to keep that dream alive and to be part of the museum's leadership as the dream is actualized. How blessed are we to stand here knowing that through all the efforts of so many people over the past decades, we now have a place dedicated to celebrating everything Amesbury has and will continue to contribute to the world. Thank you. And now, I don't know, it's on, may it go. Thank you, John and Mary, and thanks to everyone who's here today and joining us online. 
I know that I'm speaking to the choir when I say that Amesbury has an incredibly rich history of entrepreneurship, innovation, art, and progress. I can tell you that even as a native, I didn't appreciate that history until my adult years. In the last five years, with many thanks to John Mayer, I've learned a lot more about our history. I can hear John's voice talking about the importance of establishing a quote unquote sense of place, a term used in relation to those characteristics that make a place special and unique and those that foster an authentic human attachment and belonging. John and the Amesbury Carriage Museum have done a great job of telling the story of Amesbury as carriage town and highlighting our most unique and authentic characteristics without a physical space to call home. Now with the opening of the Industrial History Center, they will be able to continue their work and everything they are doing to expand and tell more of Amesbury's story. Someone once told me that we will know we've been successful based on the next generation and how they feel about Amesbury. This location, donated by Greg Jardis, in the heart of our city, could not be more of a perfect setting. The community stories that will be told here will have a profound impact on generations of Amesburyans and our guests. In recent years, I've worked closely with the Carriage Museum and I know the road they've traveled to get to this day. I remember being on the interview committee for John, inviting him to share an office space with me at the chamber, facing the reality of feasibility studies and watching the board continue to march on towards their goal of establishing their physical location. I applaud you for your persistent efforts to make sure Amesbury gets the community museum that we deserve. I hope the opening of the Industrial History Center brings more light and attention to all of our historical sites like Lowell's Boat Shop, the Bartlett Museum, the Whittier Home, the Rocky Hill Meeting House, and all of our Amesbury treasures. Congratulations on your groundbreaking today and all of the progress you've made this far. Thank you, Mary Gove, and thank you, Mary Chatney. It's very humbling, again, to be part of this project. And Mary Gove, the challenge or the assignment of creating a sense of place is exactly what our project is all about. And if we succeed by helping people feel more connected, more grounded to Amesbury, then I will be very proud of the work that we're doing. So this is a groundbreaking. This is a launch of our project. We need help from the community for us to come to close with our project. So there's a way that you could do that. Our website has gone live. It's the industrialhistorycenter.org. And you can visit that website and learn more about the project. And if you're interested in making a contribution, we will honor you and recognize that support. We have different ways of recognizing gifts at different levels. And anytime, if there are questions, I'm always glad to talk with people, give tours, and show people what's happening in our space. So thank you all. Thank you, our community who's come out today. Thank you, Amesbury. I hope you're as proud as we all are, and I hope you support us. Our hope is, come early 2021, the doors will be open, and we'll be able to bring people into our space so you can see what we're doing. So with that, I believe we're going to go inside and we'll show you around. So, Meryl? Yeah, thank you, John. So excited. So I'm going to invite everybody to be careful on these stairs because they're not really stairs. Remember, this is a construction site and uh, we're going to go in. Come on in, everybody. You can follow in behind us. Now we are inside and you can see walls and duct work and it just electrical stuff. You know, that's my, my totally... Um, as expert, uh, you know, opinion of everything. So we've got some people to talk to while we're inside here, while everybody is coming up. And I want to start the conversation with uh, Tom Pendergast, who is the vice president of the board of directors and also head of the building committee. Hi, Tom. Hello, Meryl. How are you? I am just wonderful. I don't think we could have ordered a more picture perfect day for this. It's perfect out there. It really is. It's a beautiful day. So not only are you on the board of directors, but you are um, head of the building committee. So can you share a little bit about both of those roles and where we are today? Well, it's, it's, 
It's very exciting to be on the board. Uh, it, uh, and that's ramped up significantly higher by being the chair of the building committee. Uh, obviously, there is an awful lot going on. We're working with BLD Construction as the general contractor. They've been excellent to work with. Uh, it is a multifaceted construction project, um, which makes it even more interesting the fact that the building is almost 200 years old. And, and that presents its own challenges. But it's, it's very exciting to see the progress, and we're, we're thrilled with the results. It is really just wonderful. To, it, it'll, being in here allows you to visualize what is going to be coming soon, because there's a lot that's been done already. There's been a tremendous amount of work that's been done, um, starting with uh, work done on the concrete floor, as well as the, you know, obviously the framing and the electrical and the HVAC that, that's going on. And another great thing about the building is you can see the history in the brick walls as far as where, where things have been added or patched up and filled in and altered. And, um, and that, that's really special. It, it gives so much more credence to the fact that this is an industrial history center when the building contains 200 years of history already. We were over here and um, we got a kind of, Peter Hoyt and I got a kind of behind the scenes look with um, our friend uh, Greg Jardis. And um, you can really see the bones and the age of this building when you walk around. Absolutely, that is absolutely correct, yes. Well, thank you so much. So um, we've got so many people to speak with in here and we'd like to talk with um, the executive director of our Amesbury Chamber of Commerce and it's Phil DeCollegero. Hi, Phil. How are you? Just wonderful. So, you know, just like Mayor Gove was talking, um, this is going to really be a centerpiece for our city of Amesbury. I, I completely agree with her. I think that it's exciting for um, what's planned here. When you look at what's um, been a beacon of attraction for some donors outside of Amesbury, I know that John Mayer has talked about how there's been so much energy coming from not just within Amesbury's business community, but from donors outside of it. And it shows the potential of attracting those people not just their money, but attracting their actual physical presence in downtown Amesbury, which of course will have a ripple effect with our business community here. And I think that you see the investment of our business community in this idea, um, whether it's Ben Becker from BLB Custom Building working on the site, um, the generosity of people like Greg Jardis from Amesbury Industrial, Matt Sherrill from Gould Insurance, Wayne Barbaro from Amesbury Chair. I mean, these people are genuinely putting the money where their mouth is, and they truly believe that this will not just be something that preserves the history of Amesbury, but actually helps preserve the identity of the downtown and attract people here. So, I mean, kudos to the board and to John Mayer, especially for being the driving force behind this project. It's been pretty neat. So what we're standing in front of is we're standing in front of an artist's rendition of what the really where we're standing is going to look like. And I just, I just love this. And what I love most about it is you know the Amesbury Carriage Museum and Industrial History Center slogan of community stories start here. This is what this space is going to be completely about. And um, you know, I just love the vibrancy of the artist's rendition of what the inside, where we're standing right now, uh, how it is going to be looking. So. Um, Thank you, Phil, so much. Now I want to talk to um, Ben Becker from BLB Construction. I think I'll swing myself over this way as we're live on Amesbury Community Television, doing our masked, socially distanced best here. So come in, the, come come over here a little bit, and um, this is just an amazing space. It is. I, it was pretty amazing because uh, John Mayer, when he asked me to if I was interested in the project initially, I was. I live right up the street, so naturally I was like, I go to Flatbread all the time, and I'd love to work in such close proximity to my house, but also be a part of, uh, you know, contribute to the community and, like, really just help out, so. So can you share a little bit about, you know, this was probably storage for um, Amesbury Industrial Supply, how it went from that to where we are right now? So there was a lot of planning involved, and uh, Greg Calling of Merrimack Design Architects, he was... He spearheaded the whole design part of it. So it took a lot of planning. And right as we were about to break ground, COVID happened and uh, kind of threw a wrench in things. But we found a way around it. And we were able to begin, I think, three months after uh, the first. I, I think it was like end of March we started. So, You know, honestly, with, with COVID, I mean, everything is just moving at such a different pace. That's really not that 
much of a delay considering what other companies and what other organizations are dealing with. Right, and we had a lot of uh, you know obstacles to overcome because of the age of the building and the unknowns that lied behind, uh, underneath the concrete floor and in the ceilings. It was really a challenge to uh, to overcome, but we we persevered and we're things are moving smoothly now, so it's pretty great. So can you share a couple of like, oh my, you know what, what is this? I, I live in a 200, part of my house is 200 years old, the original uh, little area of it. And, you know, we've had our house completely rewired and new plumbing and, you know, everything basically that's going on here in a grander way. Hey, did you have any of those, you know, OMG moments? Yeah, once we ripped up the part of the concrete floor, we noticed there was a huge void underneath it which apparently was part of another structure because the outside of this building did not look like this. There was other structures. So there was a void that was, you know, you could have fit a, a, a Fiat into. So uh, we had to figure out if there was actually the riverbed that was, you know, causing the erosion or if it was something else. It was just natural settling. So that was, we had to get engineers involved and the architect was involved and we were just trying to figure out how to work around it. So um, we ended up figuring out a solution and came through. Well, the new floor looks absolutely beautiful. And as we can see there, uh, these will all be display areas and meeting rooms and the lobby and everything that is depicted here in this wonderful artist rendition. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So in a couple of weeks, it'll look very different because the walls will start to get boarded up after we get our inspections. And um, then the finishing touches will go into it. So it's really, it's, it's moving along nicely. So do you think, I know everybody's thinking like early spring 2021, do you think that's doable? Early spring 2021 is doable. I have, I have John holding my, my feet to the fire. So um, the big thing is, is the exterior because obviously we're gonna be playing against the elements once, um, once winter comes. So we'll see how that pans out. Anything else that you'd like to add about this project? And you know, just because not only are you doing this, I love the fact that you are here in Amesbury and you live here and you know, this is directly connected to you and your family. Yeah, so I live right on Sanborn Terrace, which is right across from the uh, Amesbury Industrial Supply. And one of the reasons I, we decided to stay because we kind of were outgrowing our home was because this building was here and because the, I have a, I'm a contractor, so obviously I want a hardware store that I can walk to from my house and that's convenient. And just the fact that you know we're doing a project right below it is, is pretty you know, amazing. So I'm just, I feel very grateful and, and blessed that I was chosen as the contractor, so. Well, thank you so much. You've done a wonderful job. Um, I want to ask Mayor Gove to come back over for one more minute and um, just give us some thoughts about, you know, being inside this space here. Uh, Mayor Gove, um, you've had quite the beginning of your career here, and this is something that must just bring you such joy. This is really exciting. I have found a few holes in the last eight months, similar to the ones these guys ran into. <laughs> um, but uh, this is really wonderful uh, for the community. It's really exciting to be in the space. I attended many tours uh, with John Mayer and the team where we got to walk through this space to take pictures and hear about the history of the building. I don't think any of us ever thought that we would be back here with a wonderfully furnished location for the museum. Uh, so thanks to Greg for making that happen. And I love the uh, sort of cartoonish artist renderings. That was a nice touch. Um, it'll be great to see it come together. Very happy to see Ben as a local business and a uh, resident working on the project. It shows the commitment to the community that everyone has and the, the contractors and the subcontractors and the folks who are involved in making this come together. Well, he gets us, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's important <laughs> it is important yeah. yeah so would anyone else like to uh speak at this uh wonderful event before we uh kind of wrap things up this is so much fun we are you know live on the amesbury community television facebook page we are streaming we are live on channels 12 and 18. Um, it is just so wonderful to be uh, to be doing this live. I want to thank uh, Tony Noon and Russ Monroe for also helping to make this happen. So, um, anyone else? So, no, I guess John. Okay. I'm bring things to a close, Meryl. Okay. It's um, a treat. Um, I can't. I'm biting my tongue. There was a 20-foot diameter water wheel in this space. One of the things we've learned with our re research team is that water actually was directed from the powwow to High Street, and it flowed through a gate right through this very space. 
so when ben becker talks about finding a void in the floor i'm thinking is that must have been where the water wheel was and eighteen twenty six you know this building is going to be the way that we can connect people to community and the fact that we have so many people from the community who are part of this project really makes me confident that we're well on our way to success so thank you meryl for being here today thank you russ monroe and amesbury community tv to Mergo, to Ben Becker, to the board, to our leadership, and to all the supporters who've gotten us this far. We need the community to get behind us and help us make it to the end. So we're hoping for that, and here's to success. So thank, thank you. And can we all give like a big cheer for Greg Jardis? Because without Greg, you know, this, this would not be possible. Um, you know, he is, you know, he loves his Amesbury. I don't know how else to put it. And, you know, um, although he did tell me that some of the folks that uh, work at Amesbury Industrial Supply were like, what? You're giving up our storage? What? <laughs> Greg Jardis, 20 years ago, at least 20 years ago, I've been a lifelong member of the Amesbury Carriage Museum. And if I'm not mistaken, Harriet Woodson Gould, rest her soul, long-standing member of the Carriage Museum, had asked you for the use of this very space to store the carriages for the Amesbury Carriage Museum. You talk about things coming full circle, Greg. This is just an extraordinary day in the life of the Amesbury Carriage Museum and in what will be the Industrial History Center at Mill 2. None of this not a piece of it would have been possible without your magnanimous gift of this space. And you're the person who just, the gift that keeps on giving, Greg. You have been so benevolent, and Amesbury is a better place because of your presence. I think of our neighbor's table, which wouldn't exist if it weren't for your magnanimous support. And here we are, Greg. Why? What is it? that has motivated you to support projects like Our Neighbor's Table and to give the Amesbury Carriage Museum renewed life and a home? Well, quite simply, it's not just me. It's the community. It's uh, the community giving back to Amesbury Industrial Supply, which has created uh, the possibility for me to help uh, different organizations in town. Uh, it's really important to, to give back to the community, mostly a community that's uh, accepted me and my family back in the early 70s and this community of uh, my employees, the Sanuskis, the Tatarziks, you know, the, uh, the Crosbys, uh, the Nichols, you know, old families from town who are members of Amesbury Industrial Supply and who are the community. So. It's easy for me, having already received so many gifts because of the loyalty of my customers and staff, it's easy for me to understand that the best part of gifting is to be able to gift, not to receive them. However, I say it this way, I've already received the gifts, so it's easy for me to give back. As far as the, uh, the, the Industrial uh, Historical Center here, uh, this is just an incredible part of the building uh, with this beautiful field stone wall. As, as we can all see here, the, uh, the walls are going up. The floors have, uh, have been redone. The outside mortar has been, has been uh, redone. The, uh, the Carriage Museum has had this dream for very many, many years. And to answer your question long term, long way, is that I, I saw this space as valuable space for my company, but more valuable space for, for our town, for our community, for the children who want to learn about history, to honor all of those who came before us and built this town and with sweat and blood and the ingenuity and the, and the, and the, and the brains and the bronze, you know, all the factory workers, the women, the men, the people who ran all these incredible industries that really put Amesbury on the map. To me, it's just showing off what so many people have done for so many years in this town. So it's, uh, 
to me, the answer is easy. Uh, it's giving back to an incredible community, Peter. Well, and as you said, <clears throat> Greg, it's all about the history, too, of this community and to celebrate not just the carriage industry, but all of the industries, boat building, hat making, automotive, textile. This is a rich place in terms of history. But Greg, I can't help but think, I never had the pleasure of meeting your parents, but how proud they must be of their son, a man who has lived his life in service to others. I believe that we live what we learn and I would suggest that you came from a household that modeled this kind of behavior, Well, thank, giving thank, of self. Thank you, Peter. Well, my mom was from Methuen, and her family's name was Taylor. My dad was from Lawrence, and his family name is Jardis. So they, they met quite young, and uh, married and had four children. And uh, I say this about my mom and my dad, they set some great examples and sometimes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So it's, um, it's really a tribute to them. And uh, my dad in 1970, excuse me, 1983, when I bought this building, he and a crew of 30 young men tore this place apart and built it into what it is today. So I really feel as though that I owe him and my mom an incredible debt of gratitude, as I do the young men and men who work with me at the hardware store. So it's, uh, it's just a question of uh, being grateful for all those who have been so kind to me. Well, uh, you know, that's very well said, Greg. And also, timing is everything. And people would say, well, it's time of COVID. That seems a strange time to be opening a new institution like the Industrial History Center at Mill 2, but I think what gives us faith and confidence is the support that we have received from the community. And we're only just now going into the public phase where we'll be asking our membership and members from the community to consider supporting this effort. Just this past week, we had our annual meeting of the Amesbury Carriage Museum, and Dan Yeager was our guest speaker, and he spoke about museums and how it is tough right now, but it does seem as though the structure that has been built here in Amesbury, the momentum that has been uh, created much under John uh, Mayer's leadership as our executive director and your support brings us to this point in time. Such a cause for celebration. And in the upper milliard, what better space and what better place than in this incredible building that was once a very active factory building. So many stories to be told. And while the Ainsbury Carriage Museum's byline is community stories start here, your story, the story of Greg Jardis and his family, will be woven very tightly into the story of community stories in this space. Well, thank you, Peter. But I also have to throw it right back at you. You and quite a few other people have kept the Carriage Museum's wishes and dreams alive for many, many years. And you, you, you and I are both on the fundraising committee, so we, I think we should make an appeal to uh, our community t to help us to get to the finish line here. You will not be dis they will not be disappointed in seeing what's going on in Amesbury. And one of the reasons that we decided we weren't going to call it a carriage museum is because, as you stated a little bit earlier, this is more about carriages. And it's really more about people. The Hoyt family, you know, our friend Dan Healy has helped us. The Goulds have helped us. Matt Sherrill have helped us. The banks have helped us. You know, there's so many people who are so active. The board, you know, and uh, you and I sit on fundraising a committee with Bonnie and John and Steve and Tom. Uh, Joe Fahey has helped us. So this, and I'm sure I'm not mentioning a lot of names that I should, but it, it's incredible how many people really want this to, to be a show place. And uh, look at the space. It's just coming so beautifully. And all of the, uh, all of the exhibits that John and, and 
uh, everybody uh, working on. It's going to be such a, a museum that you're not just going to want to come once. You want to keep coming back because it's going to be, I guess the world word is revolving as well as evolving. So there's so much, so many things that we, we just can't wait to share with our, with our neighbors and our friends. But this is more about uh, the community and a, a great group of people, some who are no longer with us, who've been active in the Carriage Museum for many years, and probably even before I came to town 47 years ago. So it's really a community effort, you know. And we, if we all do the best we can as a member of the community, we can understand why it's a gift from the community and also back to the community, Peter. So beautifully stated. And as you said, Greg, well, right now it's fairly quiet here. We're still in construction. This will be an extremely active, interactive, live institution for this community, for our school children, for their families, for surrounding communities to come here and learn about Amesbury's rich history. You also are so right, Greg, in talking about those who have come before us. Mm -hmm. As I said, I've served on the Amesbury Carriage Museum um, board for quite some time, and I remember fondly people who are no longer with us. I remember Holly Patton, mm -hmm. Me too. Margaret Rice, Me too. Harriet Woodson Gould, yes. my first cousins once removed, Betty and Teeny Goodwin, and countless <laughs> other individuals who gave their life blood for this effort, and here we are. What cause for celebration, and what cause for our community to come together to support this effort as we make that final uh, dash to the finish line, and we are ever so close. Exactly. So I would encourage everyone who's going to hear this or see this, to please throw in five bucks, ten bucks, a hundred dollars, whatever you can to make, to make this, help us to get to the finish line here. Yeah, you will not be disappointed. I'm going to, we all know that. Yeah, not at all. And it's such a sense of community pride. Who'd have thunk it, Greg, four or five years ago that we would ever meet, reach this point, but we are here. We are here. And again, thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. And to you. I want to thank everybody for, you know, all the work that went into uh, today's broadcast. And I hope that the next time we come to you from here is for the grand opening. That would be absolutely wonderful. I'm Meryl Goldsmith, and thank you for watching Amesbury Community Television. We're live from the new Industrial History Center. Have a great day.